So, um, I made a video yesterday and I wasn't expecting to make one quite so soon, but, um, got some new information today that I thought was quite important. Um, this is, um, information that comes from, uh, Michael Marzocchi, who was the, uh, engineer who did the, um, modification of his own, um, Renault Twizy for the ECAT test in Latina. He made a post today on uh, Rossi's Journal of Nuclear Physics, which is it's quite a long post, and I'm certainly not going to read it all. But basically, he reports about some additional testing that he did with the ECAT um, prior to the Latina test. So if you remember, you may remember that on September 7th, um, Rossi and Maiko were in Genoa, Italy, to do some preliminary testing prior to the public test. And they took the um, ECAT car to um, a garage there where they did roller testing, which is basically simulating driving. And the uh, test there ran for about eight hours nonstop. And I think that gave them the confidence to go ahead with the Latina test because the ECAP powered the battery for eight hours straight. But the new post from Maiko yesterday talks about some additional testing that took place on September 6th, which was the day before the, the roller testing in, in the garage in Genoa. And uh, Maiko tells a story quite interesting that um, prior to Rossi ar arriving, he had actually made preparations to do some testing on, um, first of all, on um, a heater, second, uh, charging a stationary electric vehicle, which was, I think he says it's a Volkswagen van, and third, um, Rop operating a, an electric drill and a fan. And he got all this stuff ready, not knowing whether Rossi would give him permission to uh, do the testing. And I'll just read a little bit of what he said. Um, this is Michael writing. It took me a lot of time and quite a bit of money to build, without your knowledge, he's writing to Rossi here, that test equipment. I couldn't know how you would take the proposal of additional tests that I would have done on the day of our meeting, and therefore I wasn't sure I could have used everything I had achieved. I had to take the risk and proceed anyway. But instead, on September 6th, after listening to my proposal, you immediately granted me permission to perform these additional tests. What can I say? Immediately, I was convinced that you had nothing to hide from me and that you knew perfectly well that the ECAT would be able to pass the additional tests that I had in mind. And that I had designed that, and that I had explained to her in detail, not all trivial tests, and so it was simply fantastic. Um, I'm going to put a link into this this whole post below because I don't want to read it all. He also includes some photographs of the equipment that he had prepared. Um, so he did a test with a heating resistor system to verify that the ECAT could be used as a heating source. He also did a test, he rented a, an electric car, BEV, a Volkswagen, E-Up, and then a 500 watt power drill and a two kilowatt fan heater to, to verify that the ECAT was able to drive without any problem. Um, that is resistive slash inductive loads. And uh, then at the end, he gives uh, some numbers here. He says, in the two days, 6th to 7th of September, 2024, that the ECAT was under my control slash site for our integration tests for the ECAT EV, it produced such a quantity of energy that any other fantastic hypothesis can be excluded a priori. 
impossible that a box of that size ECAT, after having generated more than 25 kilowatt hours of energy in about 10 hours of operation, presents at its terminal the same average voltage that it had at the beginning of the test. And I think this is Michael's comment is that the, he, he considers that it would be impossible for a battery to um, perform like this. Let me see if I can get a little bit more here. He says, in all these hours of checks and tests, the voltage present at the ends of the ECAT output has never been conventional. I've already explained several times what I mean. It is certainly not a voltage coming from a battery, nor from a power source known to me. And above all, in its average value, it has never dropped in its voltage value from the first minute of the start of the tests to the last minute after 10 hours of tests. So Michael just excludes the possibility that the ECAT was a hidden battery inside of the, um, the box in which Rossi had the ECAT. Now Michael does say here, and he's always said that he was never allowed to look inside the box. That was one of the conditions that Andrea Rossi put upon him for helping him. He was just not allowed to look inside. So um, anyway, I thought that was significant news. And I think um, partly because we saw the electric car testing, uh, but now we know that the ECAT is also according to Mycos, at least, is able to act as a heater. Also, it can charge a stationary EV, which to me would be simpler if you owned an EV, instead of having to build this complex onboard system, if you could have a an ECAT uh, charger, just a stationary box, and plug your EV into it, um, that would solve a lot of charging problems. And also, uh, you know, the electricity, once you've paid for your uh, initial investment in the ECAT, uh, then the electricity is basically free. Um, just one other thing I wanted to bring up because of another um, comment on, on Ross's journal of nuclear physics. Um, Someone asked him on his nuclear physics blog whether he was planning to um, do any more videos. Uh, at one point he has said that no more demos. And so someone questioned, um, let's see if I can find it. Do you still think you will show on YouTube a test with the ECAT powering a heater within the end of this year? And Ross's response was, if necessary. So I guess he hasn't ruled it out entirely. And then I went, uh, I followed up with a question of my own. I said, you replied to Anonymous that you would show on YouTube the ECAT powering a heater if it is necessary. What does this answer mean? Can you explain under what circumstances it would not be necessary? And then Rossi replied to me, he said, for example, if we close successfully the deal we have, we have on course, we won't need more demos before entering the market. So basically, I think what he's telling me is, um, if we make the deal with this supposed big buyer manufacturer, we won't need to do any more demos because we will have reached our target. But I suppose if they don't reach this, you know, don't close the deal, then maybe he will consider it, it is necessary to do further demos to generate more pre-orders. So anyway, I just thought that was a, that was interesting to me at least. Um, I'm not sure how close they are to closing a deal or what the, what the obstacles might be to closing a deal. I mean, I'm sure it comes down to money to a large part because uh, if someone makes a huge order of ECATs, it's not going to be cheap being at work.
$250 for 100 watts, and he's trying to get a million watts or something like that. I think I calculated that to reach his target, if it really is, um, um, no, sorry, a million pieces, a million times 100 watts is what the target is, which would be $250 million. Uh, that's what is required to reach his target. So, anyway, that is my update for today. I'll put that. I'll put this up on uh, on the YouTube, and uh, maybe we'll get some more information sooner rather than later. Who knows? Thank you very much.